Now, considering you clicked on this video, you probably already know what Trailer Park Boys is, but in case you forgot, it is one of the greatest shows ever made. It is funny, creative, and revolutionary, but there's a lot of material for you to watch. I remember when I was a new fan, finding out that there's more than just the first 12 seasons on Netflix, I had no idea where to start with the other stuff. I don't know if there's a certain order to watch or anything, but uh, through a lot of trial and error, I've managed to watch every single piece of Trailer Park Boys canon and not canon. Even the things you have to pirate to be able to see. So I thought I'd spread my wisdom today and bestow upon you the only correct and perfect watch order for Trailer Park Boys, the entire series, everything within the universe. And so I have a watch order for your first time watching and a watch order for a rewatch if you're like me and you've already seen everything. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> Now, if you're a new fan wanting to start off the show for the first time, you're gonna to wanna to know a couple of things. There's two main eras of Trailer Park Boys. First is the Showcase era and then the SwearNet era. The Showcase era was the era in which Trailer Park Boys was created. It was the first original stint of a few seasons and movies and things. And after that, there was a pause in production for a few years before SwearNet was started. Now, SwearNet bought the rights to the show and brought it back. SwearNet was a company started by the actors that play Ricky, Julian, and Bubbles. This watch order is divided into four main parts, two each for the Showcase and SwearNet eras. And what you see right now is part one of the Showcase era that you should watch, seasons one, two, three, four, and five. Now these are the bread and butter of Trailer Park Boys. If you're not going to watch anything else, watch these five seasons. These are the first part because after this, some theories come around and what you should watch next, but this is very straightforward. These are the first five things you should watch. Now the second part of the Showcase era is everything else that the Showcase era has brought us, starting out with The Big Dirty, aka the first Trailer Park Boys movie, and then going on to Season 6, The Christmas Special, Season 7, Say Goodnight to the Bad Guys, Countdown to Liquor Day, aka the second movie, and then Don't Legalize It, the third movie. Now the reason why The Big Dirty goes in between Seasons 5 and 6, it's nothing really in particular, it's mostly that just when you try to fit it between any of the classic seasons, it just happens to fit best and bring the least amount of plot holes in between seasons 5 and 6. Season 6 comes next for me, and it is in the second part of the showcase era for my watch order. Firstly because it comes after a movie, and secondly because it has an unusually happy ending for Trailer Park Boys. And so that is why I think that they meant for season 6 to originally be the last thing they made, but then decided to come back for season 7 and other things. But then I have the Christmas special in between season 6 and season 7 because the Christmas special has blurry cameras like season 6 but not like season 7 and it's like a nice sort of prequel to have as like the last thing with the blurry cameras before the cameras are upgraded for season 7. Now season 7 also has an unusually happy ending for Trailer Park Boys standards and they definitely wanted this to be the last season but they made Say Goodnight to the Bad Guys as a sequel for it like an hour long special as like a finale to Trailer Park Boys. But then later on in 2009, they came back and made a second movie, Countdown to Liquor Day. We know that this happens after Say Goodnight to the Bad Guys, like canonically in that order, timeline-wise, because Mike Clattenburg or Barry Dunn, one of the two, has come out and said that it's a sequel to Say Goodnight to the Bad Guys. And then Don't Legalize It comes after that. This is definitely the last thing Showcase made, right before the original three Trailer Park Boys took production over. And we know that this is a sequel in the timeline to Countdown to Liquor Day, mainly because Ray, this is the last time he appears, and we learned that about his supposed death and <laughs> life insurance scam, which is not mentioned afterwards or before. So that's how we know that Don't Legalize It is the last thing in the showcase era. Now the next part of my watch order is the Stornet era, starting off with season 7.5, which is made in the lead up to season 8. Then you watch season 8, then you watch season 8.5, which is like 7.5 that's made in the lead up to season 9. Then you watch season 9, and then you watch season 10. And then in between season 10 and 11, you watch Out of Park Europe, which is made in between those two seasons. Yeah, then you watch season 11. Then you watch Out of Park USA, which is made in between seasons 11 and 12. Then you watch season 12. And then you watch the animated series, season 1 and 2, because it's made after they turned into cartoons. Yeah, I put the Out of Parks in there. Uh, in between the seasons they were filmed, just to add some variety, mix it up, keep it from being too boring. Pretty straightforward though. Now for the fourth and final part of my watch order for Trailer Park Boys, 
we have some stuff from the store Night era but we also have some things mixed in that are optional material in all, all honesty and we're gonna start off with the cart boy and then one last shot and then the trailer park boys black and white 1999 movie slash pilot now cart boy is uh was made in 1995 by mike clattenberg it has a uh, ricky julian and bubbles but that's not their names and it's pretty cool you can find it on youtube it's it has a lot of similar elements to trailer park boys and then after that you have one last shot which you can find on netflix is made after john uh john dunsworth died it's kind of weird it's pretty similar to cart boy same actors the characters are kind of different though and then you have the pilot made in 1999 uh I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about how I found this or uh, don't legalize it for that matter, but uh, let's just say you can find them if you look hard enough. The pilot's kind of strange because it's the same characters, same setting and everything, but uh, Ricky and Julian are not very nice people. They're not the same lovable sort of funny guys in the main series, a little bit more serious, but it's still pretty similar to Trailer Park Boys, you know, and it is technically canon because it's featured in the prologue of season one. After the pilot, though, I think you should watch the Sornet movie. Now, the Sornet movie is really confusing because it calls into question everything you ever knew about Trailer Park Boys. So, it talks about how the actors that play Ricky, Julian, and Bubbles come to form their own company and start making the show again, right? But then at the end of the movie, it's revealed that the actors and Ricky, Julian, and Bubbles are not the same people. They have a meeting together. It's very strange. I'll go into some more theories about it at the end, but you should watch it, it's worth a watch. After this though, you should watch Trailer Park Boys Jail and the Trailer Park Boys Jail Shorts. These were made after Netflix, let the show go, pretty recently. And uh, most people say it's a return to form, so you should definitely watch this after you get some context with the story in that movie. Then you should watch the live shows if you really want to keep going. The boys appear in character, but it's obviously, you know, it's a show, right? They're filming in front of a live audience, laugh tracks and everything. After this, there's three, like, sort of documentaries you can watch, or two, I should say. Parts of Dartmouth, Life of a Trailer Park Girl, and Trailer Park Boys 101. These are both documentaries made in the early eras. Extra bonus material if you can find it to watch. Now to summarize, if you're your first time watching Trailer Park Boys, you should watch it in this order. Seasons 1 through 5, The Big Dirty. Season 6, The Christmas Special. Season 7, Say Goodnight to the Bad Guys. Countdown to Liquor Day. Don't legalize it. Season 7.5, Season 8, Season 8.5, Season 9, Season 10, Out of Park Europe, Season 11, Out of Park USA, Season 12, Animated Series Season 1, Animated Series Season 2, Cart Boy, One Last Shot, The Pilot, The Stornet Movie, Trailer Park Boys Jail, Trailer Park Boys Jail Shorts, The Live Shows, and then The Documentaries. But what if you're like me and you've already watched everything available to watch for Trailer Park Boys? Well then maybe you want to try this order out. The Christmas Special. The Pilot, Seasons 1 through 5, The Big Dirty, Season 6, Season 7, Say Goodnight to the Bad Guys, Countdown to Liquor Day, Don't Legalize It, Seasons 8 through 12, The Animated Series Season 1, The Animated Series Season 2, and Trailer Park Boys Jail. This order is great because it takes out everything that's unnecessary and possibly not canon, and it gives you the best Trailer Park Boys available. Also, the Christmas special on the pilot you watch at the beginning, it gives the series some more continuity. And you can watch the pilot and the Christmas special at the start because you don't need any context from the earlier seasons because you already know what happens. Now to end this video, I thought I'd go back and talk about what I was talking about earlier with the Swearnet movie and try to explain or not explain how there can be three actors and three boys coexisting in the Trailer Park Boys universe. So the theory is that in the pilot seasons one through seven, the Christmas special, say goodnight to the bad guys, Countdown to Liquor Day, don't legalize it, those pieces of media. The real boys are being filmed for an actual documentary, which we see. But for the Big Dirty, Showcase wanted to be more professional, right? So they hired actors to play the boys. And it makes sense because the movie has a much different style than everything that came before it. And once, uh, later on, once the show had taken a hiatus after the Showcase era ended, these actors started Swearnet, partnered with Netflix, and they decided they're gonna pretend to be the boys forever, right? And so in this post credit scene, we see them pay the boys to, quote, start following them around again. But in reality, they just give them this that they don't suspect anything fishy going on. And the boys eventually go back, the real boys eventually go back to jail like they always do. And the actors go to the park 
or fake park, we know we don't really know. And they start being the boys for the Netflix series, reprising their roles like they did in the original movie. It's kind of creepy. Now, in my opinion, I don't think this theory is true because it kind of ruined the show for me. But uh, it, it's interesting. I give it that. But for me, I mean, the solution to the whole thing at the in the post credits of the Swearnet movie is that it's a post credit scene, and it's just not canon. I and mean, that's just the way I view it. But uh, with that being said, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. I'd like to ask you humbly to please subscribe, like, comment, turn on notifications, and share with your friends if you enjoyed. Again, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Peace out.